Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel, Dad's Night to Cook. I'm your professionally amateur, always tasty, non-time committing, home cooking dad. Letting you all out there know when it's your night to cook, don't have to pick up the phone and order takeout because a home cooked meal is only your pantry, refrigerated away from your kids cheering. Dad's Night, Dad's Night to Cook. Dad's night, dad's night to cook. I'm telling you, they're going to give you a whole halftime show cheer, okay? And remember, if we haven't heard of it, we ain't cooking it. Nuh-uh, this is simple home cooking. We ain't got no time to poach, mulch, croach, floach, pouch, rouch, condense, mince, trend, split. No, we're going to put food in the pot, cook it, put it on the table and have everybody eat. That's the kind of cooking show we are. Alrighty, so let's get started with today's menu. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a vegetable beef stew. Now it's going to have a little twist to it because you know Chef Manny. <laughs> you always tasted, non-time committed, home cooking dad. We are going to put a twist to it, a Caribbean twist. We're going to be using some eggplant, some um, carrots, some, some uh, cabbage. We're going to use this fruit called, uh, this vegetable called coyote, chayote. It's just a, a squash. Don't worry. Remember I said if we haven't heard of a we ain't gonna cook it. This is just a squash. You get it at your neighborhood store. Go and visit your neighborhood mom and pop stores. I do. I go visit my mom and pop vegetables and fruit stores. And they always have the chayote, coyote, whatever you want to call it. But it's just a squash. All right? So real easy. We're going to show you how to do all of that in just one moment. So we're going to accompany our beef, vegetable beef stew. We're going to have some white rice and a black beans um, sauce. For dessert, we have a nice Haitian spice cake with a caramel sauce. So come on, find the ingredients below, get what you need, and come on back and let's start cooking for Dad's Night to Cook, okay? So we're going to get started with our vegetable beef stew. So uh, in, the, in the ingredients, I told you you need something called a uh, chayote. A chayote, chayote, it's just pretty much as a squash. So what I'm going to do is going to have that squash, the, the eggplant, and all your other vegetables. I'm just going to quickly show you how to peel it and skin it and, and do what you need to do. So what we're just going to do is going to take a like a paring knife or a, a steak knife or what kind, whatever kind of knife you might have in, in your arsenal. And we're just going to skin it and you skin it like as if you're skinning a pear or an apple. You just want to take that outer green skin off. And it's an easy peel. Like again, it's just a squash. If you have a vegetable peeler, just use your vegetable peeler and skin this thing up. All right, we're going to skin all our vegetables and chop it all up and then we're going to put it in the pot and show you what we're going to do how to cook this vegetable stew. Okay. Now, we've done our um, chayote, um, our squash, chayote squash, chayote squash. We're going to put our little apron on because it's going to get a little messy. So I put my chayote into the pot and I'm going to start working on my eggplant. So I'm going to chop up Skin the eggplant just as you would normally skin uh, a, a vegetable. And then I'm going to do my uh, carrots, my onion, and my celery, and my cabbage. Okay? <laughs> giving these carrots a rough chop. And then we're going to just cut them in half and continue to dice them. Now, you know how I told you that I shop at these mom and pop places and the one I go to is a mom and pop vegetable and fruit um, store. And a lot of times they, they, they buy from local grown farmers. And I live in Florida, so a lot of times it's just local grown. And sometimes your vegetables and your fruits, they don't look like they do at that, the other name brand stores. You know, because it's organically grown straight off of the farm probably straight off of the truck that, 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 you know, that they have for picking vegetables. And sometimes they don't look as pretty. 
But that's okay. They taste just as good. And you're supporting your local stores, farmers, and businesses. Although I have no problem going to the name brand stores, but support some of the mom and pop places. All right, we're gonna lose this cabbage. Now we're gonna cut this cabbage and we want all the hard part of the cabbage, this veiny part to be gone. So when we cut into it, we're gonna de-vein this thing because we only want the soft part of the cabbage, okay? We just gave all of our vegetables a rough chop. And so we're gonna move over to the stove. We're gonna put all our vegetables in the pot because what we wanna do, we wanna get it soft, um, soft enough to mash our vegetables for our beef stew. So let's go on over to the stove and get this cooking. So we've moved over to the stove and I have my pot, Dutch oven pot on and I'm gonna put it on to a medium heat. And before I start adding my vegetables, I'm going to add two of those habanero peppers. This is just basically going to be for some um, spicy kick heat. And that's all I'm going to be using that for. So I'm going to use two whole habanero peppers. Get the, I got a little branch stick up in there, so I'm going to get that out. And remember to handle these peppers with caution and care. I use a pair of tongs to do that, but if you get that thing into your eye, you're going to be a hot mess. So we've got our vegetables. So what we want to do is we want to add our leafy, watery stuff in. So we're going to add our eggplant. Now, when you cut your eggplant, you get these nice, beautiful chunks into uh, from your eggplant. And we're going to set that on the bottom, and it's just going to water down. So we're going to add all of the eggplants. So we've added the eggplants, and what I want to do after I add eggplants, I'm just going to add a pinch of salt around, just to, to help that water to get out of it. Then we're going to add the coyote chayote, the squash. We've added our squash, and what I'm going to do is I'm adding another pinch of salt, just a little pinch of salt. Remember the pinch? Two fingers and a thumb, that's a pinch of salt. And next, we're going to add our cabbage and unfan them. And it's going to make the pot a little high and a little crowded, but it's going to cook down, okay? It's going to cook down. We promise that is going to happen. I've added all of my cabbage in and any pieces of chayote or um, eggplant that try to escape. Next, I'm going to add to the top of my thing, part of two parts of my uh, mirequois. My mirequois is my uh, carrots, onions, and celery. But we don't want to add the carrots quite yet because we want the vegetables, the harder vegetables, to get a little soft. And carrots don't take too long to um to cook so we don't want them to be mushy in our vegetable soup so we're just going to add the two parts two two thirds of the um uh the mirequois so the celery and the onions to our pot a little another pinch of salt put the top of the um pot on covering and let this simmer for a good 20 to 25 minutes until the vegetables are soft so what I've done is I've drained out my cabbage, my chiote, uh, eggplant, onion, celery mixture. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mash it up a little bit. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can do a really mashed pureed version. And if you have a potato masher, you can go ahead and use that. If you don't, you can use a bottle of, of ketchup, a bottle of wine, whatever you might have. I use my mixer spoons. Put them together, hold them at the top, and I just start mashing them. Now, like I said, you can make them as chunky, this, this, this thing as chunky or as pureed as you want. I'm going to have mine a little bit chunky because I don't cook my carrots down to a softness where they can be mashed. So, chunkier 
vegetables, chunkier carrots, make a better beef stew for, in, in my taste. But this traditionally is mashed with a the pestle of a mortar, mortar and pestle called a mush pilon. <clears throat> That's just the French word for it. But we don't have one of those things because I wouldn't use it except for when I'm doing this thing. So I don't have one of those, but my mixture works out just fine. So we're gonna get started on the beef portion of our beef vegetable stew. So I got my pot out on a low medium heat. I'm gonna add some EBOO, -O, extra virgin olive oil into my pot. About a tablespoon of EVOO. -O. Now, you know I always have to have my maison place, my, all my stuff in place. The French word, remember we learned that? Maison place, everything in place. Especially when you're making sauces or um, some side items, you just have everything ready. So I have my, you see the ingredients, I have the salt, the pepper, the paprika, all in one bowl. Then I have my garlic and, and then I got my tomato paste. So we got our onion in and, um, we're gonna let that saute for a little bit. Get that going. And then we're gonna go into our refrigerator and get our beef for our beef stew. And this particular recipe in my culture, you usually cook uh, this particular beef stew, which is called a legume. Um, but legumes are vegetables in French, but legume is the name of the dish. But we just call it vegetable beef stew. You usually use goat meat. But we don't, you know, goat meat is kind of hard to come by, not really, but I particularly think goat meat is a very strong flavor taste, and so the kids generally don't like it. It's a very gamey kind of taste. So I use just a um, ground uh, chunk of uh, beef. And so we're gonna get our onions going a little bit. And then we're just gonna give our beef um, some color. And we're gonna use our seasoning, that garlic. We're gonna use the two limes. And also we're gonna sprinkle it in some Worcestershire sauce. And get that going. So we've been sauteing our onions for a second or two, Norman. And so we're gonna do, we're just gonna add our, our, our stew chunks, our beef chunks. We don't, we, you know, we're just gonna put it in there because it doesn't matter if it's too crowded. What you wanna do is we we're gonna to try to give it a little bit of a color. So you put a few chunks in there. Let it cook in the thing. And then we're gonna flip it to the other side. We're gonna do this in four parts. We're gonna give it a little color, put the seasoning on, use a quarter of your lime, we're using two limes, we almost tipped over. Use two, we're using two limes, squeeze a little bit in there for that batch. And we're gonna do it in four parts, and we're gonna, after all of the meat has gotten its color, we're gonna add the garlic, the seasoning, and we're gonna add the vegetables back in. Mm, get yourself some. So we've had our beef cooking. We did it in, remember, in four parts. And now we're just gonna give it a, we've added the other third part, three parts, and back into the pot. And now we're gonna add our tomato paste, our garlic seasoning, and our lime, with the shy sauce, and then we're gonna add the vegetables back into it. All the vegetables and the beef are in there, and it's got the right color. And uh, we'll probably be ready to plate this thing up and eat real soon. So next we're gonna work on our rice. And remember I told you in last episodes I have this new thing, thing, it's called a rice cooker. And you just put your rice in and it's a, a one to two parts. So if you put one cup of rice, two cups of water or whatever, if you do two, you do, you know, four, you know, whatever. So I have about a cup of water, but if you don't have a rice cooker, that's okay. Go and get yourself a pot, follow the, the instructions of your rice on your, bag of rice or if you have one of these bags of you know leftover rice i think i have just about a cup look at that you got good just about a cup and just follow the recipe and cook your rice again it's one to two parts in the pot also and a good 25 minutes and you got a nice um, pot of rice but i'm just going to use my newfangled 
uh, rice cooker. So two cups of water, I put it in my microwave for 18 minutes and then I have um, a cup of rice. We put our rice in now. I forgot to mention, if you, for some flavor, put some salt. It's in the ingredients, put some salt in your, your rice. So I put a teaspoon of salt with my rice for a cup of rice. Now we're just gonna work on our black bean sauce. So we're gonna go to our pantry and get a can of black beans. This is real easy. We're not going to be doing, we could, but we're not going to be doing the soak the beans, all of that shenanigans. Remember, we don't have time to be soaking, loking, broken, choking, all that kind of good stuff. Just put it in the pot, cook it, and put it on the table to eat. So we're just gonna get a can of black beans, but before we're gonna use our pot, we're gonna use a half of onion, diced onions. I gotta get my, my, my um, crumb scraper and get my onions into my pot. Real easy peasy, pumpkin wheezy. Get that in there. We're gonna add two teaspoons of minced garlic. Those some heavy, hefty um, <laughs> teaspoons of garlic. I like myself a little garlicky. And we're gonna add a, a teaspoon of tomato paste. This is just gonna give your black bean a little bit of a color when you add it to your rice and uh, with your vegetables. I'm getting it everywhere, it's flying everywhere. But that's okay, we can clean up when we're done. And then we're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Just one teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. So I'm going to use a black pepper. So I'm just going to use a half teaspoon of pepper. We're going to get our black beans into this pot, put it on the stove, simmer that thing up, and when it's heated up, you got yourself a very delicious black bean sauce. Now add the whole content of the black bean um, sauce into your pot, okay? And then put in a little bit of water, swish it around. If you have some chicken stock, you can put some chicken sauce in just to switch out, uh, switch out all the extra um, juices and stuff from the black beans and put it on the stove and you got yourself a delicious black bean sauce. Or as we call it, sauce so quoi. Black bean sauce, sauce so quoi. You no, know, a little bit of education. French word, sauce so quoi. Hmm? Sauce of the beans. We're, we've worked on our dessert for tonight, a Haitian spice cake. Now, the recipe for this thing is below. Real easy, Dad. Put it all in the pot, mix that thing up, bake it, and be done. Easy peasy, pumpkin wheat. <laughs> Because there's those habanero peppers in there cooking. I took myself a deep breath and almost put myself out on 911. All right, but be careful, okay? Sometimes those slices catch you. All righty, so you have to collect yourself and go on out. You know, a lot of times I use a lot of slang in this, like hoopty. Hoopty to get into your hoopty and gone. That means just collect yourself and go. You know, so we'll, we'll talk about some of the slang words every time we use. So anyway, I baked my spice cake and you see that the ingredients down there call for some rather unusual ingredients. One of them was the zest of a lime, a teaspoon of zest, um, the zest from lime. So after you zest your limes, save them because we're going to use these limes in our beef stew recipe, okay? So I baked my cake. Actually, I baked my cake last night because you don't have to, you can do it the same day, but I did just because, you know, get it out the way and I had the time. Okay, for our caramel sauce for our Haitian spice cake, it's real simple. So we're just gonna get a, a small saucepan, a can of condensed milk from the pantry, um, and some thyme and some wooden spoon and a continuous stir because we're just gonna put this on a medium heat and we're gonna get it a little, uh, have this condensed milk cooked It's a golden brown caramel looking sauce. Cause right now as it starts, it's just a creamy uh, mother of pearl kind of white on there. And we're just gonna uh, cook it down to a creamy brown caramel color. With consistency. Now your caramel is this nice, thick, caramelly, 
consistency. And this is what we're going to um, spread over our spice a cake. And if you don't have the, the time or the patience, to make this caramel sauce, just buy yourself a can or a jar of caramel sauce from the grocery store, from the ice cream aisle, and pour it over also. But if you have the time and the patience to make this homemade caramel sauce, it's well worth it. What I did was I like to add a table teaspoon of almond extract, or you can add vanilla or whatever. Um, you can add some brown sugar, extra brown sugar, some syrup, whatever suits your fancy. Um, but that's what I like to do with my homemade caramel sauce. All right. So this is what I like to call delivery presentation. Sometimes after I cook, I like to box up um, the meal and deliver it to friends and family and some different situations, but that's what I call um, box presentation. So we're just gonna give it a quick taste, um, just get a little plate of uh, the rice and everything like that and give it a quick taste. So guys, remember, today is one of those days where I'm doing home deliveries of the meal that we cook to friends and families, but I still wanna taste it and make sure it tastes good. So all I did was do a little, little tasting plate here with the rice and the black beans. I'm gonna give that a little go. Make sure that's okay. Mmm. Very flavorful. I think probably the um, salt content of the black beans, maybe if we did a tablespoon, just do a teaspoon. It's got a little bit of uh, salty kick. But if that's okay with you, go ahead and leave that. It's fine for me. But, you know, some of these people that I deliver to, like senior citizens, they don't like their food a little salty. So I kind of just go with a more bland flavor. However, today, we have several people who are going to be eating this dish. Mmm. Mmm. That beef stew is so tasty. The vegetables are so tasty. Let's see if we can cut a piece of meat with our teeth. Usually I cut the beef with a knife, but stand in and taste them. So what you don't want to do is you, want, you don't want to cook your meat for too long. This is nice if it's cut up and so forth. But it's a big piece. But all in all, this meal is very tasty. Again, here is that Haitian spice cake that you have the ingredients down there and how to make with our homemade caramel sauce on top. So I'm gonna give that a whirl. And you, as you can see, there's, I made two versions. I made a gluten-free version, which I'm trying right now. And it's a little thinner. Um, doesn't rise as well as, as, as regular flour. But we, I've already packed that up and ready for delivery on that. But here's a piece of the gluten-free because I have a friend coming over and we're going to do a social distancing lunch. But um, and they're gluten-free, so. Mmm. This is not miss the gluten with all the spices that are in this cake. It's a nice spice bourbon rum cake in the top with the almond extract on the um, on caramel sauce. Mmm. It makes you want to slap your mama. And remember we was going to talk about the slang. Slapping your mama after something tastes good doesn't mean you're being violent or mean you know, or cruel. It's a term of giving me. It was so good. You just have to slap it like that because it was so good. So that's what slapping your mama means. Hi, this is Jeff Manny with a PSA. Letting you all know that it's that time of year, it's that season where I need you all to go out there and do your due diligence and exercise your American right to vote. Go and vote. And if you don't want to go out into the voting lines because you 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 just tired or you don't want to wait in lines or Miss Rona has you scared to go out in the lines, order your mail-in ballots. It's very quite simple. Just order your mail-in ballots. You get it. You bubble it in them circles, bubble it them real good. Put it in the sleeve, put it back in the envelope and mail it out. 
You can even leave it at your, your post thing and your post will pick it up and mail it for you. But me, I don't mind waiting in lines. Chef Manny had to wait in many, many, many lines to continue his right to vote. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to vote and early voting starting soon here in Florida. So in, in, in all over the country, it's early voting starts. So go out and vote. Do your due diligence and exercise your American right to vote. Okay. Thanks, y'all, for joining me for this episode of Dad's Night to Cook. Kicking it. Home delivery segment. Um, if you're new to the station, please don't forget to share, like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you know when new videos have been posted. Go ahead and share this because it's a good time and get your dad's kids night, and when it's dad's, dad's night to cook, cook. enjoy. Cook. It is dad's night, dad's night to cook from the pantry he'll take a loma book to see what we'll dine on tonight. What you gonna cook dad, what we gonna eat? His recipe's great, it, it is plus. a must. When he cooks he makes believe and trust and a wonderful meal on the table. Yummy for a tummy, it is dad's night to cook.